Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll be looking at products and specifically the multiplication of algebraic expressions to get to specific products. So we'll be looking at things like monomial times um, binomial that is singular um, term expressions times two term expressions and then so on with binomial times binomial and binomial times trinomial which has three terms inside of it. Okay, So <laughs> Looking at monomial and binomial first, we're going to look at how we work through these kind of examples, okay? So, when we're looking at this, we have one term here on the outside of this bracket, right? Which is going to be our monomial, right? And inside we have a two term, which is our binomial. So, how we're going to do this is we need to times this term into the brackets, okay? So, how we do that is we have to times this negative x squared into the first term. And once we've done that, we need to times it into the second term, okay? So, let's go ahead and do that. We're timesing negative x squared into 2x. So, what we're always doing first is timesing the number, okay? So, we know there's a negative 1 here in front of this x squared. So, negative 1 times 2 is going to give me a negative 2. And then we have x squared times x, which is going to give me x to the power of 3. Remember, laws of exponents when you're timesing two bases that are the same, we add the exponents, right? And then what we need to do is times the, this monomial into that second term now. So now it's negative one times the negative one that's over there. So this is going to give us positive one. So it's going to be a positive now. And then we have x squared and y. Okay, so that's that x squared times that y, we just get an x squared y, which is then going to be our final answer, right? So moving on to the next one here. We have negative 3a squared b. That is going to be times into the brackets, which has 2a minus b squared. Once again, we'll times into the first term, and then we'll times into the second term. So once again, looking at the numbers first, we have negative 3 times 2. So there we get negative 6. a squared times a, which is going to give me a to the power of 3. And then b has nothing to times, so b stays as is. Then we're going to look at the next one. We have a negative 3 times negative 1 over there. That's in front of the P. So we're going to get a positive 3. And that the A has nothing times, so A will stay A squared. And then we have B to the power of 3, right? Because that's that B times that B squared over there. So that is going to do it for our monomial times binomial examples. Next, what we'll look at is some binomial times binomial. So this is typically how they can set it up for you. So how it's going to work is we're going to do the same as we did the first time. We need to times this term into both terms. Okay. So the first term in this bracket is going to times into both terms in that bracket. But then also for the second term in this bracket it needs to times exactly the same. Okay. So both of these terms are going to times into both of the other terms in the other bracket. So what we're going to do is focus on that x first and then we'll move over to the negative 2y. So if we go ahead and work this out, so we get that x times the 2x, okay? So we get 2x squared, that x times negative 3, 3y, we get negative 3xy, right? Then move on to this negative 2y times 2x, we get negative 4 xy and then that's going to times the th negative 3y we get positive 6y squared so once we get that we need to look at okay so we can see that we do have two like terms in here which means that the example is not done remember we always have to get our expressions down to the simplest form and obviously now we can minus these two from each other so we get 2x squared minus 7xy plus 6y squared and that will be our final answer there is there are no more like terms to work with okay then moving on to the next one once again first term is going to times into both terms in the other bracket and the second term is going to times into both terms in the other bracket as well so looking at that x squared first we have x squared times x squared so we get x to the power of 4 
x squared times negative 2c, so we get negative 2x squared c. Then we get a negative 5y times x squared, so we get a negative 5x squared y. And that's going to times the negative 2c now, so we get positive 10c, um, yc, sorry. Doesn't matter which way you have these, I just prefer x and y to be preferred over other variables. Okay, so let's see if we have any like terms here. We do not, so this is going to be our final answer, okay? Moving on now to our binomial times our trinomial. So how this is going to work is the first term, once again, it is going to times into each and every term in the other bracket, and then the same for the second term. So 2x can times into that, into that, and into that, and then negative y is going to times into that, that, and then that. Okay, so just always pay attention to what you are timesing and don't forget, um, don't forget and don't skip any numbers, okay? Otherwise, you will obviously get the wrong answer. So, we're doing 2x first, 2x is going to times 4x squared, so we're going to get your 8x to the power of 3. Now, 2x is going to times 2xy, so we're going to get plus 4x squared y. 2x is now times in that y squared, and we're going to get plus 2xy squared. Cool. Now we're going to look at the second term over here. We have a negative y. So negative y is going to times into 4x squared now. So we're going to get a negative 4x squared y. Then it's times into 2xy. And we're going to get negative 2xy squared. And then it's times into that last term. So we're getting negative y to the power of 3. And once we've done that, we're going to look for any like terms. We can see we have a positive 4x squared y. So we're looking at x squared y. There's another x squared y here. So this is a positive 4x squared y. That's a negative 4x squared y. So we know they will cancel each other out completely, okay? Then over here, we have a xy squared. And over here, we have a xy squared again. One is a positive 2 and one is a negative 2. So ultimately, they will cancel each other out as well. And then all that we're left over with as our final answer is 8x to the power of 3 minus y to the power of 3. So once again, after you times out your brackets, you always need to look for like terms. So you can see if you can simplify your expression further, okay? And in this case, all we were left with at the end was two terms. Cool. Moving on to the next example. We're going to follow that same principle. We're timesing into the first term second term and third term again first term second term third term so we're going to get first x times x squared that's x to the power of 3 x times 2xy so we're going to get positive 2x squared y x times that 4y squared we're going to get positive 4xy squared Moving on to our second term now over here, we're going to get negative 2x squared y. Then we times it into 2xy, we get negative 4xy squared. And then we times it into our last term, and we're going to get negative 8y to the power of 3. So looking for our like terms over here. Once again, we have our 2x, we have our x squared y, and our x squared y, one's a positive 2, one's a negative 2. So they cancel each other out, and positive 4xy um, squared and negative 4xy squared, they cancel each other out. Okay, so you could sort of see that these are sort of like a reverse of the previous example. All they've done here is switched around the variables, right? And you can see 4 is here at the end now, and 4 is at the start over there. So... We end up getting virtually similar answers and so our final answer here is x to the power of 3 minus 8y to the power of 
थ्री मूविंग ऑन टू द लॉस टाइप ऑफ प्रोडक्ट मल्टीप्लीकेशन लुक एट इज बाई नोम स्क्वेड ओके सो दिस इज अ वेरी कॉमन थिंग दैट पीपल कैन समाइम्स मेक अ मिस्टेक विथ um the most common mistake here would be when people square whatever is inside the bracket okay so what i mean is so you have the 2x minus y squared and then they just square straight away what's in the brackets they say 4x squared minus y squared which is ultimately wrong okay whenever we are squaring a binomial which is in brackets okay whenever we are squaring brackets it's the brackets that we need to times by the same brackets okay so we're not timesing the terms on the inside by the same term we're timesing the bracket by the same bracket okay so basically what we mean is saying 2xy i'm sorry my bad the bracket is 2x minus y right and we have to times that by another 2x minus y and then as you can see from binomial squared we've moved on to a binomial times a binomial once again okay and as you know that's how we can do it sorry these should be coming from the y so we can do this solve this as we would with a binomial times binomial so we get 4x squared minus 2xy minus 2xy minus y squared sorry that's plus y squared because they're negative times the negative there so our fun answer here is going to be 4x squared minus 4xy plus y squared so you can see it's not that difficult all we're doing here from that binomial squared that's in brackets we're going to square the brackets okay so we need to write out the brackets twice and we need to times the brackets by each other and then obviously once we times out the brackets look for any like terms and then we simplify the expression down to its simplest form now looking here at number two you can see we have a fraction in this example so don't let that intimidate you i'm going to show you just how easy it can be to solve these fraction examples so Again, we're doing binomial squared, so we know that it's going to be two brackets written out. So 3x minus a third times 3x minus a third. Cool. Let's just set out our guidelines again. It's very good practice to draw these lines in. If you're able to do it without these lines, then by all means you may, but it can help you a lot with remembering what you still need to times into what. That's why I'm repeating it. So we're doing 3x times 3x, we get 9x squared. So after 9x squared, we're going 3x times the third over there. So now look at this. I'm going to break this up here on the side, just so that it's um, easier for you guys to understand. So it's 3x times 1 over 3 so if we're doing this in a fraction we're going to turn this into a fraction right numerator times numerator numerator denominator times denominator final answer is going to be 3x over 3 now if i simplify this fraction i'm just going to get 1x okay so you can see we've times out that fraction pretty simply and we know our answer now is going to be a plus 1x okay we don't have to put the one there but i'm just going to put it there for reference then moving on we have negative a third times 3x now it's the same thing except we're timesing a negative third so what we're going to have is negative x or negative 1x okay and then lastly we look at our fractions over here negative a third times a third okay so what's going to happen is you times numerator by numerator obviously that's one so first it's going to be a negative one and then we do 3 times 3, it's giving me 9, okay? So our final answer here, because you can see this is a plus 1x and a minus 1x, they cancel each other out, so we're left with 9x squared minus a ninth, 
Okay. So this is a basic example of fractions. So you could either times the fraction straight or you can do what I did, take it over to the side and work it out over here. And that simplifies it down very much and you get your final answer. You can just plug that into your equation or your expression that you've worked out. So anyways, that's going to do it for today's record lesson. Thank you so much for joining us.